Guys, we're going to start this way now. We're going to start dealing with how to get rid of this. OK? That will be my first priority for now. But in case if I fail, the next step is he's going to lift you up. OK? To lift me up, he needs one thing. He needs a very solid grip here. If he has a weak grip, maybe just hang on to one finger. Lift me up. It's not going to happen. He needs a very solid grip to lift me up. OK, that's the first condition. What are the other things needed? We're going to work. So for now, my priority is to fight this thing. If I can get rid of this, he's not lifting me up. If I can get rid of this, he doesn't have my back anymore. He's not chasing me the way he was so far. So this is what we're going to do. If this is the lock, then this also is the opening. There is no other opening here. If you can see, it's a, it's a plain bone joint. There is no opening. Even if I try to break free from here, I have to break his bone first that to remove the flesh. That's not happening. So whatever I have to do, I have to make sure I'm fighting in this line. Now, this is what we're going to do. If this is the lock, this is the opening. I'm going to place either of my hip bone or pocket, either of my hip bone against the lock. So we're not finding, uh, we're not working on how to get it aligned in the same line. For now, I'm just showing what we want to do. So right hip against the lock. OK? Right or left hip against the lock. Because this way, I can at least use it for an opening. My arms might not be strong enough to deal with it directly, so I need external help. And this is what we're using, either the left hip or the right hip. Okay. This is what we're going to work with. Before he starts moving me around, I'm going to lean a little back as if I'm thrusting my hip forward, as if we are doing a kettlebell swing. In kettlebell swing, we don't move back too much. But for now, I want some pressure on his back. I'm going to get my thumbs in. That's the, the, I think that will be the maximum space that you can get here if he's holding on very tightly. You might not be able to insert an entire arm. And I don't even want to insert an entire arm, because now my arms are also trapped. Right? This is where we are. From here, I want to press my arms down. If I can have stretch arms here, I'm safe. If I have bent arms, he's winning. Stretch arms, he's hardly having any, any control. It's almost gone. If you can see here, it's almost slipping but I might not be able to get rid of it completely. While I'm stretching my arms down, I want to turn. I just want to align that lock against my hip. Now from here, I want to keep going forward with my hip leading. We're just getting rid of the, the lock for now. How do we escape? We still don't know yet. This is just my survival, so that he's not chasing me explosively, and he's not lifting me up. So we are here. My first priority is to have a solid base, lean. The more I lean, easier the thumb grip gets. If I don't lean, if I'm here, I'm hiding the, the space here. So no deadlifting. You want to do the reverse deadlifting here. How do we move forward? How do we escape? That's the next step. OK, anybody? I'm here. If I'm solid with the grip, you'll have a very tough time. You'll be all on the survival mode on the back foot. You'll not be able to escape uh, effectively. Huh? So he wants to place his pocket against the lock, like this. And then you want to charge into the direction of the hip. We are here. He's going to lean back towards me, have a base forward as if you're squatting down a bit. Use it to find the thumb space. Now align your hip against the lock. Now you want to lead forward while you're still pressurizing with your upper body. So I'm not able to chase comfortably. Anytime you mess up the posture, wherein you're not leaning backwards, and you're just against the hip, then I will be able to chase you. I will be able to bend you forward. So fold backwards. Have some pressure at the back. Are we clear with this much? He's at my back. He's at my back. I want to have a little decent base. I don't want to be like a, a gaming joystick so that people can throw me around. We are here. Hip forward. Squeeze your glutes. 
my back, I'm pushing into him. This gives me enough space for, to insert the thumb in. Now, when I get the thumb in, I, I want to keep him stable while I turn my hip. Then I keep going forward. You're leaning backwards so that he does not chase you. And there is a maximum range that your partner can follow, which is this. If he wants to follow more, he has to lead forward, which you're denying already. Are we clear with this step? We just partner up. No resistance for now. We'll take the resistance after half an hour, once we know the, the entire scenario here. So let's just get rid of the grip. How do we fight afterwards? That will be the next step. Our escape is still missing. We're just working on the survival. He's still at my back. So we're just focusing on the survival part. Are we clear? Let's go. If there is a bend in your arm, that's a difficulty level. So rather than focusing on your escape, rather than focusing on thrusting your hip forward, you should focus on. Because he's not focusing on this. He's focusing on, keep, on staying lashed there. And if I work the opposite way, for example, he's pushing me. He's pushing me. Give me your arm. He's pushing me, and I'm pushing him back. That's a direct fight. We don't want this. We want unfair fight to be favorable on our side and unfavorable to him. So if he's pushing me, I would rather focus on pulling him. If he's pushing me, rather than pushing him back, if I just want to stick to pushing, I want to push him down. Or I want to push him up. I don't want to fight head on head like a, like a bull. So when we are here, I am focusing on this. He's focusing on pulling me backwards. I'm letting him, but downwards more. If he's pulling me backwards and I'm trying to push my arms forward, that's a direct head-on-head -head battle. And now is where the size difference will come into picture. If he's bigger than me, if he's stronger than me, which will always be the case. Right? So you want to align? I want to focus on this before I start charging into him. That's my first thing. But let's say if I'm fighting someone bigger than me, like, uh, taller than me, maybe they have a bigger reach. And this, if, even if I'm like completely stretched out and it's still not working, I'm almost at the point wherein this is done, but it's still not happening for some reason. I'm about to give up. This is when, you guys might want to sit that side, please. This is when I want to start focusing on the next step now. I have him in a position wherein he can't advance much. If he decides to go RNC on me, RNC is like people choking you from the back, the, the lesson that we did last time. If he decides to do anything with the arm, he wants to switch the control, he wants to move to a different uh, configuration here with the grip, I win this. I don't need to fight for the release. He's already releasing by himself. But if I'm here, and I'm almost at the point, and I feel like maybe this took like 10 seconds. I'm about to give up. The arms are still not stretched out. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to switch to two-on-one control, preferably on the side of the arm wherever I'm, I'm facing, uh, where I'm front facing rather than my back. So I want to go two on one control. This is how we're going to substitute. My far arm, my right arm will go for the watch. Again, a pushing pressure. And my left arm, as if I'm hitting him with the elbow. We are not hitting him with the elbow, but this is like I'm hitting him with the elbow. You open, and you're going to go around the arm. From here, now I'm going to charge into the arm. And I hold my own watch. Because again, we don't want to fight direct. My first indirect fight was he's pulling me in. I want to push down. I'm somewhat winning. But the, the ego hits in, and he's not letting me go. He still wants to hang on. I move on to the next thing. Check, check. This is where we are. 
push the other arm as if you're hitting with the elbow. Please be careful. Don't injure. Around, under. We're showing a lot of space here. You might not see this space in reality. Under, and you want to hang on to your own watch. So watch, watch. His watch with the far arm, my watch with the near side arm. Now, even if he decides to go on my back, he's going to hurt. All I have to do is I want to push his watch towards his belt. Once I do this, I want to turn into him. Are we clear with this? Again, we are making it an unfair thing here, but as if it's going to favor the, the little guys here. Come on. And, and we're going to change one more thing here. Go back, please. It's always good to understand the type of control right when he's taking the control on you. Please do not wait as if he's already taken the control, he's already on to the next step, and you're on the back foot here of defense. So when he's going for the control, I want to find the, the grip at least. Don't let him take a solid latch on you. That's, that's actually, again, unfair to me. I want to go forward. This is almost done. I can continue with this. I want to turn into him with my guard up, the way we're going to fight back. Or I want to switch. I want to switch, get the watch. Push the watch into him towards his belt or towards his back. That's when I start moving with my feet. What's happening with this, we're going to discuss in the next step. You will be able to relate on what's happening to your shoulder once your partner is here. Now, if there is any discomfort, you don't feel like continuing any pain, you're going breathless, you need a breather, tap on your partner. OK? So when I'm here, he's going to tap on me. Please don't aim to tap on my upper body because it's not available. Whichever is the easiest tap, and multiple times tap. Because this is something that I can feel. I might not be here, might not be able to hear your verbal taps here, maybe because of music or everyone else doing the same thing. So let's keep it clear. You can tap multiple times, and then you can say tap, tap, tap as well. Yeah. You didn't say tap. Are we clear with this? Please don't go head on head battle. If they are winning one battle, you switch the switch on to the next thing, wherever they are not focusing. First thing is they're focusing towards keeping, uh, like keeping you towards them. I want to push this down. I'm still accepting their pull, but downwards. I keep going forward. He just wants to stay lashed. I want to start turning into him now. And the way we are turning is we go two on one, as if you're hitting the elbow. Be careful, please. Person at the back, keep your safety in mind. Hide your face. Check his watch, my watch. I'm going to push his watch towards his belt, and that's when I'm going to start turning with my feet. Are we clear with this much? Do it very slow. Do not add any resistance, because now there are a lot of steps in it. If we start resisting, person at the front might not be able to remember all the steps or recall all the steps. So let's train Abhi without any resistance. Again, resistance part, we keep it for the next five minutes. Right, let's go. <coughs> If you're finding struggle in getting this space, armpit space, that's because your partner is not chasing you yet. It becomes very easy when you're switching and he's still trying to be on your back, because that leaves the space. So the more he tries to reach, to reach to your back, he's helping you get that space. Now, let's say I was a little late. While he was going for this, I found my grip. But if I'm a little late, and he's on to the next step, the next step is him bringing the hip inside, we're squatting a bit and throwing me. Right. We're going to cover this the next time. I just want to go forward with this escape and take the fight to the ground or find a bargaining position. Because we still don't know how to use that shoulder lock yet. When I'm here, I'm switching. I'm going to push. We are here. While I'm turning into him, I can squat down. That's my one 
uh, uh, one action here. There's the other thing which is happening, which is, any time please? Sure, that's it. So I wanna squat so that there is pressure on his shoulder with me dropping my weight. And at the same time, I wanna push this watch towards his ear. Okay. You can keep pushing his watch towards his ear till the time he taps out. So you have his shoulder isolated and there is a, a, a range that he can drop to, that he can, he can drop to. Beyond this point, so the reason why he's dropping down is to find that little uh, relief. For example, give me the rest, please. Don't go down. If it does not go down, there's an immediate tap. I'm breaking his wrist. So he's going to find a little relief here by finding this angle. But there is a limit to this. After this, now what? Because he can't go beyond the ground level. So this is what we're doing. I'm squatting down, and I'm pushing this into him. If he does not go down, there's an immediate tap. Or there is another way, a little lazy way. The reason why people come late for warm-ups. I'm not going to squat down. I'm not going to do any work by myself. I just start pushing this into him. Niche bat. Bat niche. Niche bat. Hath uta de. Hath uta. Hath uta. Flat ho ja. Eh, ulta. Ruk ja. Ruk. Or niche. Niche. Phone hai jayem me. Phone hai. Jhoot bol rahe. That's my bargaining here. If he does not listen, there's an immediate pop. But if you pop the shoulder out, he's not listening to you then. Because the leverage is gone. You had a leverage. So either you can work hard or you can make him. Working hard here is, I want to squat down. I want to push the watch into him. Be careful. Be very slow. Even if he's falling very uh, like explosively or he just collapses by an accident, be careful. Keep pushing this. That's a tap. Now he cannot find my feet here, so he's tapping on the mat. I have to be very careful. Next thing is, I can bargain. I just start pushing this. I don't want to squat down. Maybe there is too much at risk. Maybe he's ready to explode. You know you're about to lose this grip for any reason. I just start pushing this, and I have a very strong body language here then. It has, you have to be very verbal. You have to make sure you're telling him what to do, exactly what to do. Don't, ju don't just assume that he's going to sit down. I'm here, and I'm here, I'm like looking at him, and he's not responding. He's not going to respond. You have to be very clear with your instructions. Pair hava mirak. Hava mirak pair. Pair hava mirak. Whatever you want him to do, be very clear. And even if he's doing it, everything correct, keep doubting him. There's a phone in the pocket. Kaun si jayem mein? Wo sach bhi bol raha hoga, toh bhi. Keep doubting him. So that's the way you can bargain and you can look for a, uh, a win here. And you're ready for the escape. Huh? If fees not get fees, who's pending? Tell me. Are we clear with this? Let's just partner up and we start with this. Okay, let's go. Struggle with finishing the, the shoulder lock. We're going very gentle. I wouldn't say gentle, but actually very sensible. It could take time for one to be gentle, but sensible can happen from day one. I don't have to go this slow. I can always pop the shoulder out. But again, that's not sensible. This is why I want to go down slow, start pushing. I am not sure what his shoulder mobility is. It changes every day. He might be warmed up, he might not be warmed up, especially now when he went through so many kimuras, it might be messed up. And even when we are training for the last two years, I know when he'll tap, even then I don't want to assume. I still want to go slow and wait and understand where the tap happens for him. 
for today. If I go with Amrish, I'm again going to follow the same process. So again, gentle is tough, but sensible is easy. You can be sensible right from the first moment.